We are back in Marrakesh. We are now here at Mandela Society getting some much needed breakfast because yesterday, what was our dinner day? Some crackers. We had some crackers, we had some magnums, we had like a Kinder Bueno for dinner. So we are absolutely Marvin. We're in this absolutely gorgeous cafe. So we have gone for banana toast with some honey, some walnuts, some seeds on it. And Dan's gone for avocado toast, two oat lattes, one still water. And I'll put the price just down here. You'll see it. Okay, taste test. It's, def it's definitely like an almond butter and like some sesame, some bananas, some, I think, plums on there. It's really good. It's like, yeah, it's like a hot, like a warm almond butter. Mm -hmm. I came here with my Okay, guys, we're going to tuck in and enjoy these. We will see you shortly. Hold on. How was it? Bang. Guys, the manager of Mandela Society is so nice. The beautiful views. The staff are so nice. Would 10 out of 10 recommend to a friend. <laughs> Guys, the tickets for this was 70 dirhams, which is like 7 euros. I'll pop the conversion right down below. And underneath here, it kind of feels like similar to the Medina. It's just like winding little walls. They literally call it a labyrinth. And you just find your way out to the outside part. I'm really looking forward to seeing the outside part. I've seen it on Instagram and it looks chef's kiss. It's nice and cool in here too. So back in its heyday, Badi Palace was an enormous royal residence that took 25 years to build and hosted 350 grand rooms, including a pool, courtyard, pavilions, dungeons and stables. To cut a long story short, in the 1600s, civil war broke out in Morocco and during this time, the palace was sort of left to decay. Then this guy becomes famous, strips the palace for everything that it's worth and goes off and builds his own palace. Now back to present day, this is what we're left with. It's fabulous, magnificent ruins. explanation there's no plaques <laughs> walking through the souks to get to the Medina and it's absolutely hectic like this is a little quiet patch now but there's early donkeys there's cars there's motorbikes there's bikes there's horses it's crazy and there's youtubers <laughs> and there's, and there's youtubers guys we are now in the main square Gemma Alfna and I don't think I've ever had such sensory overload since being in Bangkok the smells the noises the sights no. It smells amazing. It smells yeah. amazing. It smells like incense. It smells really good actually. And then there's all these like food vendors, there's live animals, souvenir shops everywhere. Guys, we are here in Shoe City. Any kind of shoe you want. Sandals, flip flops, they got everything. They also have all the knockoffs. You can get Gucci, Chanel, Dior, and you can even get those little Moroccan sandals with your favorite football team on them. How cool is that? Leather goods, as far as the eye can see. We quickly got lost in the souks because Google Maps stopped working, and then this guy offered to show us the way out. Come and show you, mate. Look at no money. Okay. We might be getting scammed right now. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. Where are we? Is this? Hey! Hi! Hi! <laughs> so we just met our friend. It is Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. Okay. For you, for picture of the colors. Oh, there we have some. Yeah, so we're just going to okay. get a coffee. We have, you know, NTV. We're going to the desert. Yeah, so we, yeah, so we, we, we don't have a lot of time. But we'll be back yeah, in tomorrow. So we'll this Thank way. you, mate. Go. Okay, guys. We're just like a little bit of a wee traffic jam here. 
Okay, that guy was, he was very nice. He was going to take us to a colour market, but we don't actually have time for that because we do actually have to go to the ATVs after this and we're just trying to find this nice coffee shop. Yeah, we also ran into the two girls from the tour there. That was funny. It was a bit hectic. We were like, hmm, what are we all doing? All right, guys, we're now here in Yazil. Shout out to Sam for giving Dane the recommendation. It's a beautiful rooftop restaurant. It looks like all nice organic healthy food. Can I please get the grilled Greek chicken? And can I also get the virgin mojito, please? Thank you very much. Taste test. Oh, that is so good. It's so good. Here. Good. Mm. It's really refreshing, that isn't is it? It's so good, yeah. It's so wow, refreshing. Yeah. Chicken sandwich. I think I've sauced my face, but that is so good. So fresh. I've got some red onion, some grilled chicken, nice little spices, some carrots, some scallions in there, harissa mayo, a little bit of cottage cheese, and some coriander on top. Mm. Delicious. Very fresh. Delicious. You yeah, have to try that, yeah. <laughs> good hummus. Mm. Good hummus. Okay, we're gonna talk and enjoy this. I'll see you in a little bit. We cannot go ATVing looking like this, so let's make a quick change. Let's go ATVing. <laughs> Apparently we're cooking in the kitchen today. desert. We're now on ATVs. We're doing a two-hour excursion. We booked it through Airbnb. I will put the link down in the description. <laughs> you give me the thumbs up. I'm a good driver. Yes. You're welcome to Morocco. so filthy right now. <laughs> I'm literally muckheaded. Oh, but it's so fun. It's literally so worth it. If you know anything about me, you'll know that I've driven on the wrong side of Lisbon. You're going, you're going you left where there's people are. No, I'm on the wrong side. I've literally crashed an e-scooter and <laughs> I'm literally a terrible driver. No captain, I'm going so wrong! Captain, no, take over, take over! But this, this is my thing. This is fun. This is my thing. This is so fun. So we've come to this Berber house. We're going to get some tea, some bread, some honey and some olives. Dan's favourite. So we'll tuck into that. Oh. Go on, Lauren. Was that good? Yeah. And <laughs> um, basically everybody here is a fantastic Instagrammer. They all know about the reels, the photos. It's gas. The transition, put some salt on screen. Honestly, I'm, I could never. I, we could never. We, we bow down. And also, probably my favourite Berber whiskey we've had so far. It's delicious. And Dan is raving about this bread and honey. Get that in your gob, Lauren. <laughs> This bread, right. this is this bread's more my jam. It's the best like, bread I've had in my I would say it's actually like closer to a shibata. Uh, we're gonna tuck it and enjoy. And then go back on the edge of it. And good morning to our, I think, second night day here in Marrakesh. I've literally lost all track of time. We've come really bright and early to Jardin Marjorelle. These are the Yves Saint Laurent gardens. He bought them off Mr. Marjorelle and did them all up. And this Marjorelle blue is actually like a copyrighted color that they invented. And you'll see a lot of it around Morocco and especially Marrakesh. Now we're heading to the main photographic spot before everybody else gets here. Hi, good morning. I'm sure you'll recognize this behind me from Instagram. So yeah, me and Dan got here at 8.30. There was already a queue of like three or four people trying to get shots here. So if you wanna get here, get up right and early, either book the first slot or the last slot because otherwise you'd be queuing all day to get photos without anybody else in them. But these gardens are beautiful.
guys, we've now done the lap. I think I figured it out. This is the cactus garden. There's a palm tree garden and then there's a bamboo garden. So it's like split up into little different sections. It's so photogenic. You just have to have the patience of saint to get what you need. If you guys want to come here, it's 12 euro for the ticket. You get like half, it comes in half an hour segments for time slots. Also, if you are coming here for Instagram, because everything is green and blue, don't wear green and blue. If you want to stand out, be like your girl, wear something orange, wear something yellow, wear something bright and colorful. Wait, can I get a shot of us on feet? Dan's just shot our feet. That's a step. That's a special OnlyFans <laughs> subscription. <laughs> Link below. You've got to pay extra for that, <laughs> guys. Pay extra for that. And that was Jardin Marjorelle. Okay, we are absolutely freezing. I don't know if it's picking up on camera. I'm covered in goosebumps. We're gonna go get some coffee and have some nice breakfast. Did you even come to Marrakesh? If you didn't stay in a Riyadh. Welcome to Riyadh Bayo, where we are staying for the next two days in this beautiful oasis hidden in the back streets of the Medina. I'm going to give you guys a room tour and then we're going to do a full hotel tour. So let's start with the room tour. Myself and Dan have got a beautiful twin room overlooking the pool through the double doors. We have our own beds each. Let's do the bed test. Maintain my dignity. Perfect. And if you're a heavy packer like myself, double wardrobe, lots of room for all your garments beautiful oriental kind of ornament chair and Jane the lovely lady who runs this must know that I'm a hat woman there's a hat on top of the wardrobe and through here is the bathroom we have a beautiful I think this is like silver or brass sink it's absolutely gorgeous it looks completely handcrafted beautiful ornamental here mirror frames so intricate so decorated beautiful shower i've never actually seen a shower that looks like this before excuse the shoes where it's got these like beautiful cement cove here to stop the whole room flooding genius and just through here the windows open up so you can get all the fresh air and if you would like to pee in private they also shut. Okay, so let's move on to the rest of the hotel tour. There is a beautiful pool we want to show you guys and an even better rooftop. Let's do it. Now, if you're wondering what is the difference between a Riyadh and a hotel, Riyadhs are basically like huge tired houses that are similar to a mansion or a palace, but the difference is all the rooms are built in basically a square formation and down the ground floor, you usually have a courtyard or a swimming pool. We are fortunate enough that at Riyadh Bayad, they have a ground floor pool that looks so inviting. We're going to hop in there very shortly. And up on the roof, they have an entire terrace that overlooks the Medina. And now over here, we have the lovely dining kitchen area. If you guys have ever been to New York and been to Bloomingdale's, it reminds me very much like this floor. This is like a Bloomingdale's floor. It's very luxurious. And the best thing about staying in one of these Medinas is it's not so overly saturated with people. There's normally like eight to 10 rooms. This one has five bedrooms and each one is uniquely decorated. You can really see a lot of thought and effort's been put into the beauty of this place. And then through here, we have a beautiful room for you just to rest, chill out, take a break from the Moroccan sun and sit, have a coffee, enjoy yourself. So you guys have already seen our rooms, but I told you how each room is uniquely decorated. We're in a twin room. This is a queen room. Let me show you guys around it. It's absolutely gorgeous. This room is entirely pink walls, beautiful kind of crown molding and like a lovely Moroccan style going around halfway up the walls. Full sofa bed here, full queen bed. Let me just show you some of the more intricate pieces. But we've beautiful kind of Moroccan Marrakesh lamps going on, gorgeous mirror, lovely Moroccan rug. And through here is the bathroom. Again, lovely black and white theme, beautiful finishes in here. This is absolutely huge. And best bit of all, if you are traveling with your partner, his and her sinks, Jack and Jill's sinks. This is literally amazing. It's a dream. Jane, hats off to you. You've decorated this absolutely beautifully. Okay, finally, we're gonna jump in the pool. Let's do it, Dan. Let's get in the pool.
and welcome to our final full day here in Marrakech. We have a really jam-packed day planned, but first, rooftop breakfast at this beautiful, beautiful Riyadh. So let's get the day started. All right, guys, so the lovely team here at Riyadh Baya has brought up an entire spread for us. And as Dan said, we have enough food to feed Marrakech, we have enough food to feed the United <laughs> Nations. And it's so colorful and beautiful. We literally have different types of olives here. We've loads of spreads for your croissants that's here. We have even an omelette. We've got some cucumbers, strawberries, kiwis, apples, bananas, some pastries, some pancakes, some soda bread, some more cake, <laughs> and something that resembles some shakshuka. It's like a tomato-based dish with a fried egg in the middle and some peppers on it. And on top of that, we have freshly squeezed orange juice, coffee, berber whiskey, aka Moroccan and mint tea and some sort of yogurt parfait thing. So I definitely don't think we're gonna go hungry on I our final so. full day here no. in Marrakech. All right, we're gonna tuck in and enjoy and we will see you guys shortly when we're going to a very, very bougie coffee place. This is not a drill. We're in. <laughs> so basically, we got here like just after 10. Our name got put on a waiting list. What time is it now? Quarter to 11. We're in there like swimwear. Coffee with the man himself. <laughs> and thank you so much. So in here they serve over 200 coffees from all over the world. We even have an entire history book that comes with our menus. We've got two menus, one for food, one for coffee history book. Can we take a moment guys for these silver tumblers? Can you even, can you even cope? It's unbelievable. All the lads here are wearing like fez hats. They're all so polite. Everybody's lovely. So we're going to sit and enjoy the finer things in life. We were spoiled for choice at breakfast. Now we're spoiled for choice for coffee. Let's get our caffeine kick. Guys, we don't even know what we just ordered. The lovely man was like, okay, how do you like your coffee? We both said strong, because like, I don't know about you, but I need a caffeine boost. And then we both said, I said, I like it sweet. I said chocolate. Dan said hazelnut. Hazelnut, give me that hazelnut coffee. <laughs> and he was like, okay, no problem, leave it with me. And then we put like a lemon slice of cake and a chocolate slice of cake. I am very excited. This is probably the bougiest cafe I've ever been to. It's so grand. <laughs> I feel like I don't belong here. <laughs> it looks so good, I'm so excited. Grinder, but vanilla grinder on our fresh whipped cream. Oh my god, it smells so good. I wish the smell of it right now. Didn't smell that. Oh my god. Isn't it so good? Yeah, it's so, good. so good. All right, guys, so we now have our coffee. We've got our coffees here, just black at the moment, but they come in these beautiful Arabic jugs. You think if I take this, they'll notice? <laughs> You're coming home with me. It's just gorgeous. And let me do a taste test because I've not tried it. Now, I would never drink coffee black, but just because we're in like a coffee connoisseur place, let me act like I belong. I can even smell the chocolate off that, you know. It's lovely, so it is. It's got a good kick. I'm gonna be twitching after this one. <laughs> Delicious, but even better, we're gonna add some vanilla cream. Oh, wow. This looks so good, you know? In Paris, we have those hot chocolates and you add that in. This is like an adult version of that. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. I do think, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna have to add some sugar because it's hella strong. As the sugar comes with a wee silver scoop, I can't cope. But already I can tell you it's 100% worth coming. Everybody here is really helpful, really professional. They're all gentlemen, everybody's really polite and we're getting some epic photos and footage in here. All right, we're gonna tuck in and enjoy and we did get, like I said, lemon cake, chocolate cake. Guys, my son did have like three cups of coffee each. I'm uh, slim. <laughs> I literally feel like I've literally chucked in a hit of acid or something. <laughs> we're absolutely fired. Like, absolutely like tick it over the edge. It's really good, but my wee poor ticker can't take it. So we're just gonna sit for a while, let her, let her heart rate settle, and then we're gonna go to the gift shop, maybe buy some there. And that was batch of coffee. Let's head to the Medina and do some shopping. It didn't take myself and Dane very long before we made our first purchase at this bohemian store. I got some perfume and Dane got a cushion cover. This was one of the few places in the souks that accepted card. The girls working there were really, really friendly. Next, I was on a mission to find a Moroccan teapot for Lee. Let the haggling commence. That's a nice one. Hello. Good morning. Hi, good morning. We just wanted to know, please, how much is this one? 550. 
Oh wow, okay, no, that's okay. I no, I assure you, we have, I do. One, I do. We have for 150 dirham. Oh, okay, do you have anything for 100 dirham? We have it's for 250. Oh. For 200. Look, 100. You have anything for 100? That's okay, thank you. We can maybe do 100 for this yes, one. 150. No, see, that's too small. I drink this just myself. No, we pay more than 100. No, you didn't. Maybe. Come on. Yeah, no, you didn't. I know, but we pay more 100, yeah. 200 and all happy, okay? 120, 120, we all happy. Let me see 160. this one. 160. Yeah. 160 for this one. Yeah. 120 for this one. No way this was 200, that's 120. 120. 160, just for you. Will Come you on, Habibi. 120, Habibi. <laughs> 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 it doesn't close. No, it doesn't close properly. But it's, yeah, okay, it's, it's, it doesn't close properly. How about it? <laughs> I, I give you how much last time? I'm not paying more than 100 for that. It's broken. That's yeah, that's 35. That doesn't close. <laughs> 105 lira. It's very beautiful. It's very ornate. I don't know if I've just overpaid, but I thought I did a good enough job with the haggling. Well, you went from 550 to 110. Yeah, 550 to 110. So there we go. Okay, guys, that's one, one purchase there, two purchases there. Your shop is beautiful, by the way. Thank it's you, so you. pretty. Fry mint and green tea mixed together. Oh, it smells delicious. In the night, yes. we take it like one teaspoon of this, honey also. Yeah. And for men, he drink it to have an explosive night. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my God. Like this. <laughs> he said like this. Oh my God. This is just a hot water, please. Put it here. Just mix it. Now, your, hand, your hands up like this. Cup it in. <laughs> I can smell it from you here. You can smell it from there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You see it? Ooh, oh my god, that little piece is like. Oh my god, it's like I'm breathing it like 3D. You can feel it in my eyes and everything. Yes. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. You're welcome. Thank you so Thank much you for so the much. tour, guys. Yeah. After shopping in the souks, we took a trip over to the IBN Yusuf School. Now, not only is it architecturally stunning, but it's actually one of the oldest Islamic schools in the world. It's 40 dirhams to enter and it's open daily from 9 to 6 p.m. All right, guys, we are now here at Comptoir Darna. It is a lovely belly dancing restaurant in the Marrakesh area. It's more of a bougier area. There's like no boo down here. There's Louis Vuitton, all of that. Myself and Dan are trying to pretend that we fit in. And we've just paid seven euro for Coca Cola. So we're going to tuck in and enjoy. We're going to get a main each, see the belly dancers, listen to some traditional music, and enjoy our final full night here in Marrakesh. Got fava beans, chickpeas. Warm toasted bread, one with thyme, but one with stuffed olives inside it. Dan is loving the nice warm bread. <laughs> so me and Dan tucked into our food. I did, sorry I didn't show you a lot of food. We were quite hungry, but my food was really good. And my dish was 225 dirham. And then Dan's gone for it. Was it tagine? The Berber tagine, and that was 195 dirhams. And then they've just given us the dessert menu, but we're kind of full. So we're just kind of killing time now until these belly dancers come out. Let's hope the belly dancers come out soon and put on a nice little show for us. I didn't wear this top for nothing. So this is where we are going to leave you for tonight and I will see you bright and early. Bye night. Good morning guys. We have just had our breakfast, lovely breakfast up on the rooftop. And sadly, today is our very last day. I am here until roughly like 5 p.m. So I'm gonna try to carpe that day and make the most of this morning. But I'm really sad because Dan's leaving. Dan's heading off to Essaouira for a few days to just unwind and chill and relax before his very next adventure. So I gotta say goodbye to him today and go solo. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit shaky, I'm a little bit shaky. But I'll be fine. I'll be grand, won't I? I'll be fine. I'm so sad to say bye to him. This will be the first adventure. There's plenty more coming in the future. Dan 
Shane has been like the best travel buddy. He's put up with my snoring. He's put up with my type A personality where I'm like everything's planned within an inch of its life. And he literally takes the best photos and videos. So go check him out. <laughs> Honestly, you. he's got an entire series on like Vietnam coming up. He's had some crazy experiences. He's heading to Portugal. Am I allowed to say where you're going now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's heading to Portugal next. So go check him out. He literally does the most random adventures. You would not believe the places that he stays and the places that he sleeps. So <laughs> check him out. He's an absolute legend. I'm going to link it down below and I will pop his subscribe button on screen for you at the very end of this video. All right, guys, I've walked to Gemma Alexina Square. I hear it's pretty strict here with your camera, so we'll see how it goes. I might get yelled at and told to put away. Absolutely mental here. There's snake charmers, there's monkeys to chains, there's guys with little fez hats dancing around. It's so loud, I don't even know if you can hear me, and this is literally like 11 o'clock in the morning. These guys are calling me over. <laughs> These lovely guys have invited me up here to film with them. Hey! We're gonna get some juice. Some good Moroccan juice. It's good camera, man. Good. Nice. 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 Oh, I was worried about coming alone, but Moroccans are the best. They were so kind to me, those guys. They kept calling me sister. <laughs> Thank you very much. After an hour at the souks, I desperately needed to unwind, so I headed over to a local hammam for the full works. Okay, guys, so we're here now at the hammam. I'm gonna see if they can take me. This is what I'm going to. It's called uh, Spa O Yin de Jade. The lady led me into the changing room and handed me a plastic packet with disposable underwear. Now, for obvious reasons, I couldn't film what happened next two hours later. Oh, wow, you guys, that was the hammam. I literally just felt like to be relaxed just be here and there, and it was really quiet, and I don't want to ruin anybody's then. But that was so nice. When we get, I'm gonna go for lunch and I'm gonna sit down and talk to you guys through what happened, and then we'll see. <laughs> that kind of slacking me off back there. Lunchtime. I feel so amazing, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna dub this part over because I think past Lauren was so zen after the massage that it took her all of five minutes to tell a 20 second story. So here's the gist of what happened at the hammam. You lie down on a marble bench in a dark steamy room, you're showered, lathered in lotion, scrubbed harder than a leftover casserole dish and rinsed off. The lady even sits you up like a baby and washes your hair and face. It's bizarrely comforting. This is then followed by a one hour relaxing argan oil massage and finished off with a cup of sweet Moroccan mint tea. But yeah, I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. I definitely don't think I was like brave enough to do the local one. Like the private one is like, for me, it was really good, but I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. I'm going back to London now, all refreshed and clean and free of fake tan. So I'm just having some lunch here on this rooftop at Naranja. I've ordered like a chicken wrap, a virgin mojito, and then we'll head back to Jane's Riyadh, pick up the suitcase, make our way to the airport. All right, guys, so I am back at the Riyadh now, just enjoying my final few moments of Oasis before I got to take off for the airport. But I just wanted to say, at the start of today, I'm not gonna lie, I was like really nervous about going around Marrakesh, my own, just because of all the research that I read. It said like it wasn't really safe for female solo travelers. I just said that like, beware of a lot of scams and like the men could be aggressive and this, that, and the other. I just want to say like when I went to Naples I kind of saw the same stuff and that just wasn't my experience and I'm not denying that that is probably some other people's experience but for me today out on my own nobody hassled me I felt like maybe one guy was following me but then he left maybe I was just being paranoid I think I'm now going to go find I just wanted to avoid this guy I felt like he was following me I literally got lost at one point I went into a cafe the lovely man that worked there literally gave me the wi-fi password he told me which way to go he found the map on my phone for me and he even said that I could sit there and cool off for a while I didn't have to buy anything just until I got my bearings again so everybody's been really kind and really generous and I just want to say like if you're thinking about going to Morocco and you're worried because of those reviews that you've read don't be worried literally all the Moroccans that I've spoke to have been nothing but warm kind welcoming and funny that's it for me anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope to see you in the next one until then take care look after yourselves goodbye and good luck Mwah.